Hey gamers, what is going on today? It is me, Dan, moderately anonymous MTG, and we're back with the greatest EDH channel in the multiverse right before your very eyes today. We've got a very quick game today, so we're just gonna hop right into it. Y'all know the deal. If you want to support the show, go like, comment, and subscribe, hit up our Patreon, use our affiliate links for Dragon Shield and TCG player. Let's go ahead and hop into the deck techs. First up is Mod playing Kest Dissident Mage. This is a mid-range ad nauseum deck, looking to overpower its opponents with Grixis spells and close out the game with Underworld Breach. Up next is Tori playing Najila the Blade Blossom. This is a combat-based combo deck looking to land Najila early, take over the game with Warriors, or win with Underworld Breach combos. And third is Vegiwacken playing Ratadrabic of Urborg. This is an attrition-based combo deck looking to drain its opponents for infinite life to win the game. And in last is Phil playing Kinnon Bonder Prodigy. This is a mid-range combo deck using Kinnon's ability to put creatures directly into play and combo out with infinite mana. <laughs> After this, I'm going to go on the couch with my blankie and I'm going to watch the Love is Blind reunion. That sounds like fun. The season's crazy. I haven't watched much of this season, but it is in general the most banana show I've ever seen. It's, it's pretty fucking bonkers, so I recommend you watching it so we can talk shit. All right, uh, everyone got a keeper? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone got a free game? Um, all right, then we will begin the game. Good luck, have fun, everybody. Good luck, have fun. Hmm. Well, um, City of Traders is my land for turn. Mana Crypt is my mana crypt for turn. Demir Signet, just the blue floating. Cast a Cabal Ritual. Okay. Oh, we're, we're gaming over there. Yeah. <laughs> all right, make three black. And I will exile a Simeon Spirit Guide from my hand to cast Ad Nauseum. Holy crap. Uh, that's okay. Sure. Oof. Wheel of Fortune. Jewel Lotus. Intuition. Scalding Tarn. Mind Break Trap. Oh no. Defense Grid. Lotus Petal. LED. Now we're cooking. Mox Diamond. Now we're cooking. Ancient Tomb. Arid Mesa. Mana Confluence. Watery Grave. Bergy. Ragavan. Talisman of Blue and Red. Gamble. Offer. Git Probe. Uh, Faithless Looting, Blood Crypt, Rainforest, Forbidden Orchard, Tainted Packs, Monolith, Deluge, City Brass, Talisman down to 9, Sonic Orchard, Final Fortune down to 7, Burden Catacombs, Brainstorm to 6. Let's stop there, maybe? I'll take a peek. Yeah, that's enough. We'll stop there. Lotus. Uh, LED. Yeah, I'll crack this Lotus Petal and cast Gamble. I'm going to misstep it. Damn. Ooh. I have to do something. Yes. I guess, I, I don't think I can make another red for this final fortune, so I might be in for a penny and for a pound here. Hmm. I'm gonna take a peek real hard at this hand. It's gonna be a shame when you pass me and I lightning bolt you. <laughs> you um, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to offer you can't refuse and hope that you don't have a second counter spell. What if I told you I didn't? I would be happy. Yeah, I don't. Okay. Now I gotta hope I don't discard Underworld Breach. Can you offer you can't refuse your own card? Yeah. I think the line was offer your own gamble. I was And that gives that. you red red for final fortune. Yeah, uh, that's a good one. I was thinking about doing one of the rocks in the beginning. Yeah, there's probably a couple of ways I could have gone about that a tiny bit better. No one had said anything for so long though. I thought it was safe. Then Tori was like, actually. <laughs> Sorry, I have to take eight <laughs> action. I'm not just going to die like a dog. I wanted you all to make no game actions. That would have been the best game ever. I would have put that right up on YouTube. Imagine how quick that edit is. Oh, my God. <laughs> so Phil definitely saw the line here. Like I said, I was thinking of a couple of different things as I was going through these lines. But if I try to offer my Jewel Lotus, for instance, in the beginning, Tori just missteps that. I have to wait for her to make the first move. So I definitely back myself into a bit of a corner here. We're going to roll 1d28. 24. One, two, three. Misty Rainforest. We got there. Oh, wait. Or did we? I don't have any mana. Hmm. Oh, I forgot about this part. Well, shit. Uh, I totally blew it. I got two. Uh... Yeah, I'll just pass. I'll sculpt my hand and pass. Okay. So you're telling us there's a chance. Yeah. Uh, Tori, you have two treasures too, right? True. I do have two treasures. Uh, let's see. I'm going to play this block that oak. And a crypt. Uh, uh, I'm gonna tap these for Najila. Ooh, everyone clap. So I think I'm gonna have to just sack a treasure. I like jump. your treasure tokens. 
thank you. Um, and put out a, a mana vault, and then hope. Draw, play a Caves Coilos and a Jeweled Lotus. I will cast Rata Dravic. I'll play a Moxa Amber. I will pass the turn. Uh, I'm going to fetch. I'll grab a Tropical Island. I will then Chrome Mox, imprinting a Transmute Artifact. I will tap Tropical Island and Chrome Mox to play Felwar Stone. And then I will tap Felwar Stone to play Mystic Remora. I will then be passing the turn. I think very likely Phil has the right idea here with setting up his mana for turn two. The only thing that I don't like about this play is that it really leaves him with very few options for this Mystic Remora as we move into my turn. It has to be a free spell, and if it's not in his hand already, it has to come right off the top. Alternatively, Phil could have skipped casting the Felwar Stone here, just done the Chrome Mox, and then still have a Tropical Island open, which isn't a lot more mana, but it does open up a lot more interactive spells for him to have. Roll for Crypt, odds is damage. That is even, so we are safe. Beats. Ah. Never didn't have it. <laughs> Float two, cast a defense grid. Fish. Now, Fish, I haven't asked anything of you. <laughs> However, if this could be some interaction, that would be hot. Please no, please no, please no. You got it. Leave one flying to cast this under roll breach. Fish. You may. Um, and then we are going to play a land for turn. It'll be an underground. We are going to sacrifice the LED for blue. And your city of traders. And my city of traders. Thank you. Uh, LED for blue, and we're getting rid of Git Probe, Mind Break Trap, Tainted Pact, and Bergy, and Blessed Name Iris to draw. Cast the LED again. Exile one, two, and three. And you can draw again, Bill. Go blue again. One, two, three. Two, cast it again. And this time we're going to crack it for red. Use one of it to gamble about uh, one, two, three. Um, Anything down there, Veggie? I'm having a great time. I'm hanging out with my friends. With your craft single sleeves. Uh, so I think at this point it's deterministic unless Tori has a piece of interaction. I would like it to be. And then, when they needed me most, I vanished. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am, I am good conceding here. The writing is on the wall. Okay. All right. Rats, I, I had infinite mana plus a Kinnon activation on my next turn. And Vigi with the Ad Nauseum in hand too. <laughs> yeah. I had a D2, a Deadly Relic, and a Flooded Strand. Oh man, uh, I couldn't believe how good my hand was and then I drew the Ad Nauseum off the top and I was like, well, the stars <laughs> have aligned. Well, that was a quick one, but that was really sweet. I love bringing out Kess and still seeing how powerful this deck can still be. Grixis decks can just still do it. It doesn't matter if you're playing Rogsai or not. If you got powerful Grixis spells, you're going to be able to cast sometimes. Sometimes you're just going to have the absolute nuts in your first seven. Playing a game like this where I just have an absolute god hand can almost feel like it's cheating, but it honestly made it really sweet to see all of my opponents have absolutely stacked hands as well. Tori had the Deadly Rollick online, Veggie was getting ready to build up for an Ad Nauseam turn, and Phil was just going to straight up win if it got back to his turn too. And it just goes to show you how important seat ordering matters in this game, and also how important sequencing is. If I had seen the line for the final fortune, it would have completely stopped any access of interaction that my opponents would have been able to have. But luckily, sometimes you can play a little sloppy and still get away with it. Big shouts to my guests for hanging out with us today. If you don't know Phil from Thraping You, go check him out here on YouTube. Same thing for my love Tori over on Scribe Babies and Veggie Wagon over at Decked Out EDH. Thank you so much for watching, and we will catch you next time. Be good to yourselves, everybody. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, one of the best ways to support us is by leaving a comment and hitting that like and subscribe button. It's incredibly helpful and always appreciated. If you want to support the channel more directly, join our Patreon to catch episodes early, join our private Discord, and get some other awesome benefits. One final thank you to all of our patrons who make great content like this possible. And thank you for watching. Be good to yourself, everyone.